One thing I've always wondered about from the original Halo trilogy is out of all of the Marines, a lot of them are used as some sort of narrative device or atmospheric device where a lot of times they kind of die to paint a picture of suspense. Like this Marine at the beginning of Pillar of Autumn in Combat Evolved. He just gets destroyed by this exploding door and it got Luke and I thinking, out of all of the Marines in Halo 1, Halo 2, and Halo 3, how many Marines are actually truly unsavable? Marines that are scripted hardwired in to bite the dust no matter what amount of player intervention is actually possible. So we decided to go through every single encounter where Marines die and see if there's anything we can do to save any of them and make a count as to which Halo game has the most Marines that are absolutely and unequivocally impossible to save in Halo. Okay, but real quick before we jump into this video, if you ever liked any of the music that we've ever used in any of our videos, I actually have officially released my first ever album, Future Payphones, and I am incredibly proud of it, and it took me a really long time to get these songs to a point where I felt comfortable releasing them to the public. They're free to stream everywhere, and you could watch a really cool visualizer on YouTube already, but if you're a content creator who needs music or you just really want to support my music endeavors, I am selling a licensed version of the album with a link in the description, which gives you access to the 12 songs on the album plus 14 bonus tracks which you can use freely and unlimitedly in your own YouTube content or you can just buy them to support this channel. I just need to sell a couple more licensed versions of the album to cover the costs of making the album and then anything after that will be split by Luke and I so that we can continue to make content here on YouTube related to Halo and everything else that we do. So not a sponsored video today but we're kind of going to shill this album bit. I am really really proud of it so thank you guys all so much who have already listened to it and have shared your support. It really did mean the world to me and once again you can listen to the entire entire album for free on Spotify and Apple Music as well. Okay, let's see if we can save some Marines. So we started things off with that one door Marine in Combat Evolved. Okay, so yeah, this guy, we really did want to save him just to start things off strongly. I mean, he just is so polite trying to guide Master Chief the right way and then just kind of gets yeeted by this door. And we really did try to save him. We actually ended up coming up with a strategy where we would block him at the door and then try to trigger the next part of the level where the door would explode. And sure enough, the door does explode but for whatever reason this guy is tied to this door no matter what so as soon as the door explodes it doesn't matter where he is he does end up going flying and we couldn't do much to save him here so it was a little sad and it did though give us a little bit of insight as to what to expect moving forward on this level because we do think this is likely the case with a lot of these marines who are on the pillar of autumn we think they're actually tied to an explosion that is already scripted to go off so even if we could try to interfere to save them, they likely, no matter where they're standing, will still end up dying to the explosion. Okay, so in general, with the Halo campaigns, there are groups of Marines that you very obviously can save, and you, in some cases, are expected to save them. Now, how well you do this is optional, but we are going to be skipping over these ones for the sake of this video. We're explicitly looking for the Marines that are typically not intended to be saved to see if we can interfere and actually end up saving them. So, of course, there are the Marines that we can't save on the beginning of Halo after we ping-ponged around in the dropship. Truth and Reconciliation was one that was interesting because we knew that there's an expected scenario that's supposed to happen once you ride the grav lift up into the ship where some invisible elites come in and surprise the chief and the marines. So this was a good place to check next and we went ahead to see if we could stop these elites from taking out some of the marines before they discuss the situation of whether or not the covenant's on board. What? There's no covenant here. Yeah. Think maybe nobody's home. So Luke and I jumped in and we made sure to take out all of the enemies that pushed in before they could even get close to touching our Marines because we had to protect them with our lives, which we did. We were a little nervous when the Hunters came running in, but sure enough, we were able to keep this group of Marines alive without getting killed by the secret sneaky elites that usually come in and mess up some squads, break up families of Marines. So we're good to go on this and we could move on to the next level. The Silent Cartographer, we were pretty sure already we knew the situation here where if we pushed ahead on the beach taking out all of the Covenant, we could have a pretty large group of Marines alive who survived the fight. And on easy difficulty, this is obviously the case. We were able to make sure that all of these Marines were safe and sound and didn't get a scratch on them during the fight on the beach. So that was pretty obvious. We weren't too sure there was any scripted sequences in this level. And for the most part, Combat Evolved seems to be much like this specific situation. Matter of fact, for the rest of Combat Evolved, it seems like the Marines are pretty much just hit or miss that you kind of 
get to choose whether or not they survive or not based on how well you feel like protecting them. There was one Marine we were a little bit curious about, which was on Guilty Spark. I mean, this guy's just having a really bad day or something, and he's all paranoid. And we kind of chilled with him for a bit just to see how he was doing. And just out of curiosity, we wanted to know what ends up happening to him because we never do find out what happened to the Marine that's just terrified on Guilty Spark. So Luke decided to stay behind with the Marine, and I ran ahead to the level, triggering the cutscene. And just before the cutscene faded in, the dude just vanished. Yeah, he just phased out of reality. He just disappeared. But uh, I guess it doesn't count as dying, so he did in fact survive. So we can clear our conscience on that. On Halo 2 Cairo Station, we were optimistic that maybe if we were fast enough, we could try to see if we could save the guy from the armory. But it seems like the second that those doors open up, that guy's already dead. So there's not too much we can actually do there to try to save him. On outskirts, there was this weird interaction that we noticed where the scarab blasts a warthog in the air coming down from the tunnel somehow. And we don't fully understand where the warthog was, what it was doing right before it was getting blasted by the scarab. But we noticed, despite how hard we tried to get up to the warthog in time to see if we could stop it from getting blasted or move out of the way or take the shot for the warthog, there's actually no Marines in this warthog. So we don't know if this is just an empty warthog getting thrown around or if those Marines were just vaporized that were in the warthog and what they were doing driving on top of the tunnel in the first place. So. So there's not too much we can actually do here. Then on Metropolis, towards the end when you see the Scarab and you're waiting for the door to open to get to the last section of the level, there's actually a Scorpion down below that typically gets nuked by the Scarab. Now at first we weren't even sure if there was a Marine in there, but when we tested it out we saw a body fly out of it. So we decided to try jumping back down and running at the Scorpion to force the driver out, but we could actually never get him to remove himself from the Scorpion in time. So then we had the idea if we we turned on the Feather Skull and Sputnik Skull and then launch ourselves towards the Scorpion to get the Marine out quicker than the Scarab can come and nuke it, we maybe would be able to save the Marine. And sure enough, we managed to try- and sure enough, we actually managed to pull this off after a few tries. We ended up saving this Marine, which was kind of the most extreme way to save the Marine, but it definitely was worthwhile. And while we started off just going through the Halo games in order, we quickly realized that Halo 3 is actually one of the games that has the most instances of these Marines that are scripted to die as a part of of the narrative. So Halo 2 really didn't actually have all that many moments. But Halo 3 kicks it right off at the beginning of Sierra 117, where there is a Marine that is being held up by a brute that typically isn't too difficult to save, though we did manage to fail the first time we were trying to test it. But yeah, you can save this Marine, he'll end up grabbing a gun and joining the fight if you kill the brute fast enough. Crow's Nest actually has a couple of different instances like that, where for instance here, there's a bugger that will pick up a Marine and and kill him if you don't end up saving him fast enough, though you can end up getting the bugger to drop the marine and you'll end up living. We really wanted to save these marines that are in the warthog that explode the second the door opens. And this is something we've tried many times even before we decided to do this video. There's apparently the possibility of getting inside of the blown up warthog if you move absolutely fast enough through this door right when it explodes, though we've never been able to actually pull this glitch off. But even then, if we could pull the glitch off, those marines are still kind of doomed. There's not a lot you can do. They're actually hard scripted to be in the explosion. So, so unfortunately there wasn't too much we could do to save them. Then interestingly enough, when you get to the barracks in this level, there's a ton of Marines that are face to face with different brutes. As soon as you open the door, one Marine just gets yeeted across and he hits this wall and dies. And then there's a ton of other brutes that are very close up with some Marines that you can actually save. So we first went through and tested out if we could save all of the Marines in the barracks, besides the one that slams his face into the wall. And we did manage to have some good success here saving them. It took us a couple of tries to move fast enough to make sure they didn't actually die, but you can save them. As far as this guy, no matter how hard we tried to get in there as quick as possible to save him, we weren't having too much luck. I tried timing a deployable shield even to see if that could deflect him and break the impact before he would die, and that didn't end up working. So then we decided we wanted to take a closer look and see kind of how how this marine actually works. So with the acrophobia skull, we flew over across the gap and entered 
the barracks in reverse. If you do it this way, none of the brutes actually spawn in. And we walked over to where typically the marine will fly and hit the wall. Then we had Dim stay behind at the entrance of the door and open it so that all the brutes would spawn in. And as it turns out, this marine doesn't even get thrown by a brute. He just gets yeeted out of thin air at maximum velocity into the wall. So we tried various things like trying to deflect his fall and also push something in front of the wall and he just goes through it and dies anyways so there's not too much we can actually do to save this guy. On Savo Highway when you're turning around this corner there is this brute chopper that will ram into this warthog pretty quickly before you can even get close enough to make a difference and we really want to see if we could save those marines so we decided to try with the acrophobia skull on and try to time shots and do whatever we could to save those marines and while I did get a little bit of luck one time jumping in the chopper it still was boosting and splattered into them by the time my hijack was complete that I couldn't do anything to save them. We then tried to stop the chopper with plasma pistols which would in fact stop the vehicle but it was already moving too fast so the momentum continued to carry through and break the warthog. So it was looking like this was actually something hard scripted that no matter what type of intervention we did we wouldn't be able to save those marines. However I did eventually realize that if I flew over the loading zone I could stand in front of where the chopper spawns in and then Dim and Luke could move forward and trigger the spawn in of the chopper and then maybe from there we could try to stop it. I actually ended up bringing two plasma pistols along and they also tried shooting plasma pistols at the chopper and we were able to bring it to a complete stop where we then tried to quickly evacuate the warthog and get it out of there and we we're actually pretty happy. We were able to save these marines even though we actually thought this would probably end up being impossible. On the storm we knew that there are these fusion coils that are kind of set up purposely for the hunters to hit and cause this explosion that usually kills a bunch but for whatever reason when we actually got there the fusion coils were already exploded and none of our marines were there yet so they kind of proved the point for us without us having to test anything. And then on Floodgate, there are various instances where the Flood attacks Marines where you can intervene. But what we were most interested in trying to save were the group of Marines at the very beginning. And we tried going as quickly as possible to save them where we could. But what we ended up learning is that some of the Marines are in fact unsavable. For instance, the very first one that gets infected doesn't actually get infected by anything in particular. He just grows a Flood Spore or whatever they're called right out of his body randomly once the trigger is hit and there's no enemy you can actually stop preemptively to stop this whole thing from happening. We did manage to save two of them though. As for the rest, we weren't so lucky. And then moving on to the arc, there is this one Marine that typically gets a grenade thrown at him, but if you're on a low difficulty, he can survive, especially if he has a carbine. And some of the times if he doesn't follow down with you or you move too quickly to the level where you throw a deployable shield here, you won't even be there. So then you don't have to worry about him dying, which is kind of nice. Okay, and then one that General Kid actually did a video about, and you can watch the full video, we'll link it down below, is uh, saving Sergeant Johnson in Halo 3 and not only getting him out of the room after the cutscene but actually getting him to the end into the ship and you can actually do that you have to like push him with ghosts then get him in a ghost and push the ghost a certain way and uh, once you are close to the warthogs you can drive back with the warthog a little bit and he'll get in the warthog and then you can drive him all the way to the end and you can actually save the Sergeant Johnson so um he's not dead. So at this point we were more intrigued than ever so we decided to continue on looking at the other Halo games as well and we jumped into ODST, specifically Kazingo Boulevard, to see what happens to that one Marine that jumps on the Gauss cannon and shoots preemptively against the orders and takes that shot he's not supposed to. So we were pretty desperate to try to stop this whole situation from happening so we won't end up dying like he typically does. What we ended up doing was had Luke in a ghost drive right up to the Marine as fast as possible and take over in the Gauss cannon. Then from there we would use the tanks to try to shoot at the enemies like the Banshees and the Wraith to stop a shot from being fired over that would typically kill the Marine here. Now, one thing we did notice is that the Marine isn't actually the same Marine from the voice line that you hear when you play this level. For instance, we had a female Marine who would say her own voice lines that were separate from the audio that you actually hear when you're pushing up in the level. Also, I guess the Marine's really not programmed for anything more than dying in the Gauss cannon, so they just kind of stood around there. 
chilling. Also, a lot of you know of the special police officer on Data Hive, where if you have all of the audio logs, he won't die from the buggers and he'll follow you down until you get to the final audio log, where then he tries to betray you. But we did test this a long time ago when we were doing the glyph hunting. And as it turns out, if you just leave when he turns on you, he'll end up eventually staying behind and you don't actually have to kill him to progress in the level. So in turn, you can save his life even if he doesn't really deserve it. Halo Reach was a bit of a fun one, especially because on Sword Base, there's this Warthog transport hog that gets wrecked right away the second that the door opens pretty much. It spins around and then a Wraith hits it. So we decided we would desperately try to save this Warthog and we tried multiple times without any luck. No matter what we did, it seemed to end up dying until we one time were able to throw the perfect grenades that would cause the Warthog to flip. And at that point we thought maybe we could save it, but then the Warthog just moved moved ahead and still ended up exploding and dying. So we tried a couple more times to get the Warthog to flip, which we ended up actually managing to do. And from there, interestingly enough, we were able to get all of the Marines out of the Warthog and away from the Warthog. So if something happened to the Warthog, they would survive. I then took the Warthog and just drove it in a different direction to avoid any Wraith shots. And oddly enough, this Warthog is still programmed to explode no matter what. The Warthog does end up exploding, but since we we're able to get all the Marines out before the maximum time frame before the Warthog has to explode happened, we were able to save all these guys, which was pretty exciting because this was something we obviously were able to do beyond what the game necessarily intended us to be able to do. Here's another one that I found later, and actually it's on Long Night of Solace. There's this Marine that gets yeeted into the wall, but General Kid did a video and they tried to save him, and if you do this insane Seraph out of bounds hijack and then glitch into the room while you're invincible with a checkpoint, you can get in there and there's like the small explosion that actually causes the Marine to die, and then if you use a bubble shield you can block it. Thanks to Jengus who actually told me this earlier today. On Halo 4, in the level composer right away there's this marine that straight up just gets destroyed very quickly and typically he ends up dropping the sticky detonator which you end up using at the beginning of the level but you actually can jump in front of the bullets and take the hit for him in which he ends up surviving and surprisingly enough he was pretty grateful he even saluted us for saving him which was kind of cool it's a real shame that he gets composed anyways so None of this mattered. And then in Halo 5 Guardians on the level Glast, there's this Warthog that ends up getting hijacked by Promethean soldiers. We really did want to save them, but no matter what, we're way too far away. And even if the Warthog is blown up, they still end up getting hijacked and thrown off of the Warthog. So there's really nothing we could do to get close enough to end up saving them. And while this guy gets straight up yeeted off of the bridge, this guy on the other hand actually doesn't need to be saved. He ends up surviving the this whole ordeal which we found out by accident when we were walking around and I heard him talking and I was really confused on how a marine was talking when there was no marines around and we ended up reverting to our last checkpoint over and over and over again until we found out where the voice was coming from and yeah it was this guy just talking saying his line about the warthog or something or a car and uh so yeah he's okay he's gonna be fine I hope. But hey, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you are subscribed with notifications on and maybe leave a comment with which Marine is your favorite in all of Halo. These comments help the YouTube algorithm know that this video is a bop and they should send it out to more people, which would be really cool. You can check out our other video we did where we tried to see how long we could survive against the Marines if we decided to turn on them. Or you could also, you know, check out my album, Future Payphones, if you want to support me. That would mean the world to me. Luke even thinks the music is okay. All right, we'll catch you guys all next time with a brand new video.